Final round of the John Deere Classic coverage on CBS, streaming on Paramount Plus. JT Poston, your leader through 54 holes, coming into the day at 19 under. Going to become the third golfer to ever win wire to wire at the JDC. But he's got to do something he's never done. That's convert a 54 hole lead. 0 and 3 coming in in that scenario, but Poston came out sprinting. Three stroke lead entering the final round. Birdie at one, birdie at two, another at three to move to 22 under. Would get one back at five. And then here at the par four six from 138 yards, just kicking himself. Short sided into the green side bunker would be another bogey. So moves him back to 20 under. Anybody want to take advantage? How about Emiliano Grillo? Three strokes back entering the day. Now two back as we find him at the par 5 10th. An eagle putt for the co-lead. Tracking, tracking, ugh. Misses it on the high side. Would tap in for the birdie to get to 19 under. Just one stroke off Poston. But that's as close as anybody would get. Par 3 12th, Poston from 70 feet. We'd love just a two putt, right? It's right to left the whole way and Poston gives it a good run. Leaves the pin in and made him pay. I think it falls at the pins out. I'm just saying, I'm a proponent. Remains at 20 under following the par, his sixth par in a row after those bogeys at five and six. Then from the sand at the 13th, leaves himself nine feet. By no means in the hole, but the man is nails. I mean, look at that putting stroke. If he were any more upright, ball would be behind him. Get Breed on the phone. Posting with a two shot lead on 17. Looking for his first birdie since the third hole. Here from the green side, gonna read this one beautifully and leave just five feet of work left for his birdie. And birdies on the 17th with a multiple shot lead. Well, you can enjoy that walk down 18 as that one would find the bottom of the cup, moving him to 21 under. Three shots clear with just one to play. And you could just stride it out, take off that cap, tip it. Poston's wife, Kelly, still a little nervous despite the three-shot lead, but it would be a par at the last for Poston and a wire-to-wire -wire victory at 21 under. JT Poston, your winner of the 2022 John Deere Classic. That's the second wire-to-wire -wire win of the season as he joins Joaquin Neiman, who accomplished the feat at the Genesis earlier this season. It's also his second career PGA Tour victory to join that 2019 Wyndham Championship. It's 40-1 to pre-tournament, and with the win, it carried a whole lot. Poston now fully exempt on tour through the 2024 season. He also earns a spot in the upcoming Open Championship, the 2023 Masters, and the 2023 PGA Championship to go along with 500 FedEx Cup points, which parks him 22nd in the standings. Poston post round with our Amanda Renner. You were the first player in 30 years to win in wire to wire fashion at the John Deere Classic. That sigh of relief says a lot, but tell us what it took. It is hard. I mean, wire to wire, having the lead for that long, it's just hard not to think about it and think about that finish line all week. So um, I tried to stick to the game plan. We got off to a great start and then kind of started to try and give some back, but hit a lot of good shots on the stretch. Fleener did a great job keeping my head in it and keeping me right there focused on the next one. So. Dottie talked all day about just how calm you seemed no matter what was happening. Can you tell us what was happening in your body and what this, what you've proved to yourself that you can push through that and into the finish line? I was just trying to breathe. I, I was really, I think there were a lot of nerves, a lot more than the first few days and I was just trying to battle through them. And, you know, I think after, after today, after this week, I feel like knowing I can play with those nerves and I can still win, I can still shoot a solid score considering the pressure and trying to win out here. You know who might have been more nervous than you? Your fiance Kelly over here. She's still gripping nervously. You guys are recently engaged, soon to be married. How exciting is this? It feels like when good things are happening off the course, it makes it a little bit easier for things to happen on. Oh, uh, it's great. I mean, life is good right now. We couldn't be happier. We're excited to get married in December and getting our dog back here soon in the next week or two. So <laughs> life is good. Who was more nervous, you or your fiance? I think I honestly was. <laughs> right that 
like it. But I wasn't there for the first win, so this is extremely special for me. And I'm so proud of him. Thank you. Colt said he was watching you and he was a little bit concerned. Yeah. So we're glad that you pulled through, but you have now also punched your ticket to the Open Championship. Your first time, but worth the wait for the 150th at St. Andrews. What does it mean to be headed across the pond? Oh, I can't wait. I've always wanted to play in one of those um, at any of the venues, but to, for my first one to be at St. Andrews in the 150th, I, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to see what it's like. Unbelievable. Go celebrate this one, you too. Thank Congratulations. You. All right, so a beautiful moment for the whole family. A 40 to 1 pre tournament will pad your pockets nicely, but not as nicely as $1.28 million coming home with Poston and his second career PGA Tour victory. All right, let's unpack this one with the best in the business. CBS Sports senior golf writer Kyle Porter, uh, KP, JT Poston, even keel from Thursday's first tee ball to the final putt here on Sunday. What impressed you most about the performance here out of Poston at the John Deere? Yeah, I think going wire to wire is really difficult. You know, he talked about that uh, after his round. He 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 it was he commented on the fact that he looked so calm throughout, and he said, "I was just trying to breathe." You know, and <laughs> and I think that's sometimes what we can't see internally with what's going on. And he hit the ball great. You know, I, I thought his. Uh, his tee to green game was super impressive. He was second in the field behind Chris Goderup uh, from OU, who just turned pro and, and finished first in the field from tee to green. But he just struck the ball so well. It was really, honestly, uh, it, it was sort of a continuation of how he played at the Travelers Championship last week, where he finished tied for second. But yeah, I think I, I just think going wire to wire is emotionally mentally even spiritually so so difficult to even at a you know even at a tournament like the john deere classic which is not a great strength of field just to try to maintain that for four straight rounds is extraordinarily difficult yeah you mentioned it there the field not as strong as in years past but this is a tournament that has served as the launching pad for careers in the past not to go too big picture here on poston but you mentioned his current form at the travelers now here at the john deere uh, the arrow is pointing upwards right now, KP. What are your expectations for this young man the rest of the season? Yeah, I, 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 it is pointing upwards, certainly. He's in the top 25 in the FedEx Cup now. He's had kind of a weird season in, mm -hmm. in that he, uh, early in the season, he missed a bunch of cuts in a row, but he's popped up with these sort of top fives or top tens at, at some interesting places. So, I mean, I think for somebody like JC Poston, the ideal rest of the season is, can you make it to the tour championship, right? You've got some guys that were gonna be in the tour championship, guys like Dustin Johnson and, and, and Patrick Reed, players like that, that are no longer going to be there because they're not playing on the PGA Tour anymore. So I think it creates an opportunity for somebody like a JT Poston to, potentially sneak in at, at 30 or 29 or somewhere kind of in that in, in the bottom of that uh, tour championship range to, to get to a place where uh, it is is you know unfamiliar territory for you so I think that for him is a really good sort of uh, goal for the rest of the season which you got to remember there's only about a month or so left until the uh, the FedEx Cup playoffs start so uh, that for him I think is is a worthy goal to uh, to be pursued and yeah, no doubt about it playoff time is creeping up as we turn our attention to the Open Championship uh, the Scottish Open all that lies between us and another major trophy we'll get to that in a moment here but we do track trends when we're talking about the PGA Tour and early on in the season, nobody could convert a 54 hole lead <laughs> and here over the last month we've seen winners come out of the final pairing each week. Is there something that you could point to here in the shift? Is it guys finding their stride later on in the season? Is there any through line here as you look at these winners coming out of the final pairing as of late? I don't know if there's a through line as much as there hasn't been a ton of um, guys chasing these players down. You know, you think mm -hmm. about last week, uh, Sahith Thagala uh, had a real opportunity to beat Xander Shoffley at the end. He made double at the last, you know, so it, 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 you have guys with opportunities and they just can't uh, push it across the uh, across the finish line. Rick Gaiman pointed out uh, today that uh, JT Poston played his last 15 holes in one over par. Uh, and he still won, you know, at the, at the John Deere Classic of all places. It's just a, a scoring bonanza. So I, I think it's been really, for me, a lack of, uh, you know, partly it's building up your lead, obviously going into the final round, but a lack of guys really like right behind the leaders, putting the uh, pushing the pedal down and, and making a charge on Sundays. Uh, shout out to our Rick Gaiman, who was spot on with the Goddard up charge as well. If you put down that top 10 ticket as he uh, prescribed you to, you could be walking away with some money here out of the John Deere <laughs> Classic as well. So a tip of the cap to our guy, Rick. Download and subscribe to First Cut Podcast as always. A lot going on, as we mentioned here, around the world of golf right now. Live reaction continues to pour in. Uh, Tigers arriving via choppers at the J.P. McManus Open Championship. 
championship builds, bids still up for grabs this following week at the Scottish. Where's your focus going to be over the next couple of days here, KP? Well, I, I think it really has turned from sort of this, and, and we've seen it kind of kind of ping pong back and forth, but turning from the live PGA Tour drama, which has been uh, pretty pervasive throughout the last couple of months, mm -hmm. I would say, and and now I think we get to turn to uh, we get to turn to Scotland. You know, you go you go Scottish Open at the Renaissance Club on Thursday. Before that, we get a little lead up. I don't know if you saw this. Jordan Spieth was playing golf with uh, with a goat on Saturday. <laughs> a goat, a goat playing with a goat. Uh, he was playing with Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler on uh, Sunday. Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns were playing Bally Bunyan. So you've got all these top 12 players in the world spread out all over Ireland. They're all going to congregate on Monday and Tuesday, at, at, like you said, the J.P. McManus Pro Am. Uh, at Adair Manor in Ireland. So that'll be fun to kind of, uh, as a little appetizer to what should be a great Scottish Open with, I believe it's 14 of the fifth, uh, top 15 in the world. And then obviously uh, the granddaddy of them all, the Open Championship at St. Andrews here in a couple of weeks. So uh, it, it's coffee golf time. It's time to turn our attention to Scotland. And I think it should be a great uh, fortnight, if you will, uh, in Scotland uh, uh, as we head into uh, kind of the, the, the apex, I think, uh, of the entire summer. The boys across the pond and vibing and a bit of the local fair as well. What better fit uh, than golf across the pond and a couple of pints? Let's talk about Bonobo's perfect fit. Scottish Open coverage coming your way on CBS this weekend. You've got Scheffler, Rahm, Morikawa, Thomas, Smith, Shoffley, Speed, Stacked Field. All gearing up for the Open in two weeks. KP, whose game is fit for the ground game, uh, let's say, we see over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, I was looking at the leaderboard from last year at, at, uh, at the same golf club, the Renaissance Club. Min Woo Lee obviously won the golf tournament. This was right when uh, when Colin Morikawa really struggled, right before the Open Championship, which he went on to win. But I think the answer for me is is Justin Thomas. He, he's been playing just tremendous golf. He finished in the top ten here last year, uh, three shots behind Min Woo Lee. I believe he finished tied for seventh. And I'm just really excited. I think one of the one of the themes over the last year or so has been what a great shot shaper, shot maker Justin Thomas is. Hasn't always been true, uh, but it is true right now. And I'm excited to see, especially if the wind is howling, the weather is up, to see what kind of shots uh, JT can shape uh, in Scotland over the next two weeks. He has not shied away from any and all conversations over the last couple as well. Kyle Porter breaking it all down here on CBS Sports HQ. We'll see you soon, KP. And for more, be sure to download the premier podcast in all of golf. It's the First Cut Podcast. Kyle Porter, Rick Gaiman, the whole gang taking you under the ropes and into the action week in and week out on tour. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the First Cut Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.